Hello everyone, this is Fireswamp, and today I thought I would go over what I've been up to over the last few weeks instead of clearing Chrono missions. While I have been busy with some IRL stuff, I was I was still playing Creep World 4, but um, I was attempting to beat some of the hardest levels I could find. And I thought I would take this opportunity to go over some of the hardest levels I found, both in the last two weeks, as well as over the last two years of playing this game. Uh, while I will structure this video like a top 10 video and that maps later in the video are generally harder, difficulty is very subjective. With different maps testing different skill sets, direct comparisons aren't a good way of describing difficulty in my opinion. Different people will find different levels on this list more difficult than others. Furthermore, I tried to include a variety of maps in the 10 showcase levels as opposed to the 10 maps I thought were the hardest. If I just went with the 10 maps I thought were the hardest, the top 10 would kind of look a bit similar. So two caveats as well. I will not include maps intended for or initially cleared using Mverse, and I measure the difficulty of maps by the difficulty of beating the required objectives, not all optional objectives. So with that out of the way, let's get into the levels. So we'll start off the list with Colony's map 2415, Nexus 8 Hardcore. Uh, so this is a map by Vertu, and this uses Vertu's custom supply of insanely powerful weapons. So if you start digging through the menus here, you can see several of them. Okay. Now, this is a survive. Uh, this is a hold mission. So you need to survive 30 minutes of an absolute hell of an onslaught because not only do you have some new weapons, so does the Creeper. It has these new emitters. It has some things down here. Okay, so to start off, you get this big shield. There's also creeper rain on the map. Very dangerous. And for all of these weapons that you have here... Actually, sorry, I should probably say, this shield is not going to keep you safe. <laughs> this will keep you safe across a couple dozen layers of creeper. And uh, yeah, there's no creeper cap. It will be assaulting you with several hundred layers of creeper. And the main difficulty of this map is actually kind of learning what all of these units do, because the map is kind of balanced around you actually understanding what all of these units do. Once you actually do sit down and understand them, the map isn't too bad, but even then, it's still quite a challenge. This is a difficult map, even if you fully understand what all of these units do. But... That is, I do not want to spoil too much about these maps, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So, moving on, the next map is a bit of an oddity, uh, because it's not a colonies map. So, those, so the Mark V mission generator can generate some uh, very difficult maps, depending on what, in, what parameters you choose. The parameters in question usually being 1444, so small map, insane enemies, squares, resources, aggressive eggs. This is generally considered the hardest set up for, uh, for Mark V missions. And the specific map I'm going to be showcasing is my namesake map, um, Fire Swamp 1444. So this is possibly the most aggressive map on the list, uh, with all potential landing zones covered in barely over a minute. So you have no time to spare. You have, like, you need to stabilize wherever you're going to stabilize in a very short time frame. Now, thankfully, if you do manage to stabilize, victory should kind of be a matter of time. I mean, you know, you still have to deal with the, a big wave of stuff at, at four minutes. But other than that, the map is kind of won once you stabilize, and that's, that's why it's not further on in this list. It is very hard to stabilize, but once you do, that's really all the map has. Uh, but make no mistake, with the stashes, the emitters, no creeper cap, it's no easy task. <laughs> And that's why it shows up on this list. So, now we're going to head back to colonies. So, our next map is uh, from a creator that's usually not known for creating brutally difficult maps. So, Tricky Core uh, has made a map by the name of Rainbow Road Pain. Tricky Core usually is known for making much easier maps, but, well, they, they can make it. They, they're good enough at the game to create some absolutely brutal maps if they want to. Okay, so 
what's so bad about this map? Well, you know, it, it, it already looks pretty bad. <laughs> and trust me, it only gets worse. So we're not gonna. So we're just gonna take a quick look uh, at some of the bigger threats. So we got flip breed. So you're gonna start over on the east side. Creepers over here. So there is also creeper on this flip breeder, but y you might be able to see the the flip breeder is very weak. The creeper breeder, on the other hand, is not weak. If the creeper that's pulling up on this yellow on this yellow um, band gets to the blue and activates the creeper breeder on your side of the map, you're pretty much dead. Similar for the mesh. If the mesh from over here connects to over here, creeper will flood over here, connect, and kill you. And, uh, yeah, I will say, spoiler alert, it's, like, pretty much all the creeper on this side is going to end up crimsoned. Just on this crimson air terrain up here. So, again, you're fighting a bunch of crimson terrain, a bunch of, sorry, a bunch of crimson creeper. And, okay, so these are all reasonable threats. And then you kind of get, like, just the cherry on top, just to, just to destroy you, is what's known as the Energy Drainer script. So, if I just plop that the lab, what you can notice in the very top left is that my generation is going down. Okay, the Energy Drainer script is reducing, uh, energy generation by 1.8 per minute. So, you need to ramp up your energy production a lot quicker than normal. Uh, actually, I should say a lot more efficiently than normal, because if uh, if you do not get your energy up in a reasonable time frame, you're just going to end up with negative generation and you're dead. Um, and, like, this persists across the entire map, so if you just take too long, you're eventually just going to run out of energy and die. So, this map is a brutal start, just getting your energy up and running, a brutal mid-game dealing with all of these incoming threats, and then an absolutely brutal end-game pushing into a ton of threats. And that is how this map ended up on this list. It is just all around quite brutal. Okay. So, next up is another colonies map. And uh, it's a... It's from a creator that... Uh, you just remember the name. So, the map in question is Hand of Omega Doom Fireproof by Hypnotic22. Okay, well, let's take a look. So, this is the intended landing zone. You're given a very small area to work with, uh, a very small amount of breeder terrain, six, uh, AC breeder terrain, six tiles of it, and a couple hundred tree stumps. Uh, now, if you just kind of go through the threats, we've got some weak emitters, so, you know, reasonable threats, but considering how little space you have, that's, that's going to be a bit annoying to deal with, especially with all the mesh and the fact that a good chunk of it's going to end up crimsoned. Uh... But that's, that's, it, it, the other threats are pretty bad. So the blob nests, they fire only one blob, but it's every, uh, between the two of them, it's going to fire one blob every 30 seconds. And, uh, yeah, starting up the four minutes, those blobs are going to be carrying eggs. These spores are not targeted at your base. They're targeted up on this, these two stashes and this crystal. Uh, why this is usually a problem is that the void here is actually terrain height 10, as far as creeper flow is concerned, it's been modified so that this is creeper height 10 for the purposes of creeper flow. And this means that the creeper from over here and over here is going to flood over tier where your base is and kill you. So yeah, you have attacks from diff from points you can't attack. And just, just, just because this map needed a cherry on top, the spore launcher here, when it produces eggs, it locks onto everything else. Which means, yes, on occasion, it will launch an egg right towards this emitter, right through your base, and kill you, if you are not prepared for it. Good luck! Okay. Now, next up, we have a map from someone not very well known for making maps, generally known for beating maps in absurdly quick order. The map in question is Dig Site XG7521 Harder Version by Zexes. Okay, so in stark contrast to our previous map, we have a lot of space, a lot of resource terrain, like 1600 starting energy. Like, okay, so we've got a ton of resources. We've got a wall, for God's sake, just to keep us safe from standard emitters. Okay, so why is this such a difficult map? So, first of all, there's Creeper++. Plus Plus. 
So we're kind of on a time limit. Second of all, you might notice the only resource we really have over here is blue light. So in terms of we've got energy, we've got blue light. Okay. And we need to activate the 11 totems around the map. Okay, so first things first, we got no nullifiers. We can't shut these emitters off, as nice as that would be. Um, but the biggest threat on this map are these spore launchers. These spore launchers are location targeted inside this walled area. And each of these spores has a fire delay of 16 seconds and spawns a thousand creeper per spore. What this basically means is that in your base is going to be spawning 16,000 creeper every roughly 16 seconds. Okay, well, can you shoot them down? No. As I've mentioned, we don't have any red on over here. The only source of red on is here. And once you start getting this red on ore, you do not want to be spending it on anything else. You just need to be sending it into this totem. You need to you need to survive a connection to this red on ore for about three minutes to collect all the red. Uh, to, sorry, to collect all the ore are necessary to power this totem. The rest over here use liftic. These ones over here use uh, anti creeper. So these totems, once you connect to them, can fill up pretty quickly. And if you can get around to the side of this or basically you can get this green armada to power everything else but surviving three minutes connected to this red on while the spores are raining down from you is no easy task especially because the creator plus plus puts you on quite a time limit so with all of that like that is why this map is so brutal you have a lot of energy you have a lot of resources but you need them to survive so the next uh, map we're going to be looking at is uh, actually one of my maps. Traitorous Totems by Fire Swamp. Okay, so, well, kind of a bit similar to the last one. You've got some starting energy, although a significantly less amount. This is basically just to help you with tree rollout, but you've got a lot of area to play with. Trees, a bunch of resources, um, and, you know, you're only up against really Creeper, and then I mean, that is, that is a lot of blobs, but you have the energy to deal with that many blobs. Okay, so, well, similar to the last map, you don't have a nullifier, and your goal is just to activate the totems. Okay, so where's the problem? The problem is that, uh, okay, so this totem's not a problem, anti-creeper, this problem, 200. Again, these take a while to fill up, but that's... That's something you can deal with. Uh, but the problem really comes from this totem. 200 liftic. I never mentioned. We don't have any green R over here. So how do we... How do we power this totem? The other problem, really, is that the, these totems are in, the, are in enemy territory behind some incredibly powerful emitters. And these front ones activate around the two and a half minute mark. And as soon as this gets crimsoned, you are in very deep trouble. Because the sheer career production, is, uh, especially when crimsoned, is not something you can deal with. So you need to somehow figure out how to power this totem and somehow survive powering the other totems. Or, well, I will, spo I will slightly spoil alert. There are some tricks here. But I don't want to give any of them away, so that is for you to figure out. This map is difficult both in the actual strategy uh, needed to solve it, as well as the actual execution. Good luck to anyone who tries it. With that, we're just going to jump into the next map. So, there was a name I told you to remember. And it's back. Hypnotic 22 another map known as death from above okay so what we'll notice is that this map looks fairly innocuous we've got four standard emitters these actually also have delays these this blob nest is standard this spore launcher is just on a bigger delay than normal but otherwise it's pretty standard um okay so what's the problem well, the problem is that there is a script on this map with two features. So, the first one... Now, you might notice health bars on my units. That's because health regeneration on this map is set to negative. And so, what happens is your towers will die out over three minutes, and your uh, weapons will die out over six minutes. 
so that's pretty bad. But the other one is that the other is the other half of the script. Once waiting for waiting for one. Just come up, come on. Where are they? There they are. So these little things. This is a part of the a second part of the script. It's known as skimmer rain. So basically, these are just constantly raining down, and these are effectively just stun bombs. So it's just raining stun bombs all around this map. This map is absolutely torturous to push through, with your front line just constantly being stunned and your back line decaying out. It's an absolute hell to push through, and quite an, quite an interesting map. But for anyone who wants to try it, I will leave that up to you as we get into the final three. So these three maps kind of became a bit legendary because they took so long to be cleared. So the first map is another one of mine, When the Wall Falls. Okay, so this map took 11 months before it was finally cleared. Okay, why? Well... I feel like this is a pretty good way of just saying, yeah, this. So what this map is, is there is 9 million Crimson Creeper over here, a wall, which decays over the course of 5 minutes, and Breeder Terrain, which is powerful enough that if it activates, you're pretty much dead. Now, despite how this map looks, this is a puzzle map. You cannot win this by brute force. So you need to figure out so what trickery you need to actually beat this map. And I and Yeah, I don't want to spoil too much. If you want to try it, just know that this is a puzzle map. This is not a map where it's just like Ooga Booga build build weapon smash creeper. That that will not work. <laughs> okay. So now this map, it took 11 months before it was cleared. What could possibly be worse than that? Because we've still got two more maps to go. Okay, well, the next one is actually a map that, to this day, does not have a verified clear. It has an unverified clear. And it is a mystical box of Omega Doom by, uh, again, Hypnotic22. Okay. So. This map pops up with a warning. To all dare who, uh, who all who... To all who dare enter this map, be afraid. If you value your sanity, run away. This warning is true. If you value your sanity, stay away from this map. To give you an idea, this is the amount of saves I have on this map. Yeah. Okay, so what's so brutal about this map? Why is it, like, pseudo-uncleared? Okay, well, this is a box map. So the general so for anyone who doesn't know, boxes will give you random uh, random units when you open them. Friend boxes will always give you friendly units, but you're kind of limited in how many you can build. Mystery boxes will give you some good, some bad. And the only way that you are going to be beating this map is to be getting Titan boxes. So what you need to do is you need to open mystery boxes, push up into here, build Titan boxes, and then push across this map. And for anyone who's thinking, Okay, well, if it's random, I can save scum it. No, trust me, there is a lot of details around this, which basically make all of your ideas for save scumming. Like, they do kind of work. You can save scum to see what the results are in advance, basically. But you cannot, like, re-roll the, you cannot re -roll the outcomes. It's always going to be whatever outcome you get. So this map is absolutely torturous because you can be, like, 30 minutes into a, into a seed that looks pretty good and then you find the seed is unplayable because of some other factor and you just kind of lose there and have to hard restart and so basically this map requires both a large amount of luck and skill to beat and that's that's one of the main reasons it's so like so few people have like or actually no one has no one that we could verify has actually cleared it Okay, well, so we had a map that was, that is pseudo-uncleared. Uh, actually, no, before we get into the actual final map, 
uh, I will just kind of give, I will kind of give some honorable mentions because as I said, this is a top 10 list, not of the 10 hardest maps, but a representation of some of the harder maps giving a much bigger variety of what's available. Okay, so, you know, if I was actually to make a hard, like a hardest map list, honestly, like, like half the maps, maybe even more, would have been hypno maps, like you know, corner, Forbes and Islands, Run, all say civilian. Like, there's a lot of very brutal hypnotic maps in here, and you know, it's not just hypnotic. Like, there were absolutely some other maps I almost included, like you know, Summoner's Riff by uh, by Germanium. Uh, Fear of the Dark by Joa, Jao, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but the story, you know, you've also got uh, Mountain Pass by N1CC3, like, I, I could keep going, like, you know, there's Endure, like, there are a ton of maps that could have made this list depending on if I want to emphasize, like, if I want to emphasize a certain thing or show off a certain mechanic. Uh, I will have a more thorough list in the description below of some of the maps that I was hoping to include, but just didn't, uh, because they just didn't make a cut. But now onto the last map I did include, and for those of you who have stuck around the, or been around the community for a while, you knew this map was coming. The Red Will Run by Cornia Canis. This map stood for 531 days before it was being cleared. And this map was considered the undisputed hardest map in, in colonies until recently. And it wasn't because a harder map was introduced, but because cheese was found on this map. Now, let me be clear. Even with the cheese, this map tops the, tops the list. Like, this, the cheese just brings it kind of comparable to all of the other maps. Okay, well what's why is this map so high up on the list okay so there's realistically three threats on this map the eggs the spores and the creeper okay so let's let's be clear with the spores you do not like this red on ore is way too slow to be shooting down these spores you cannot shoot down the spores the spores fire every nine seconds every 12 seconds this gives you one ammo every eight seconds you just do not have enough red on to power a missile to shoot these down can't be done. Okay. Well, what about the... Okay, so there's one... And I will also say, the spores are location targeted onto these totems. And have a payload of 1,200. Like, if they hit, you're pretty much dead. Okay, so we've already got one impossible task to deal with. Next up, the eggs. These are aggressive eggs, so they usually lock onto these totems. The eggs have a payload of 1,200... And uh, if they detonate into Creeper, you're pretty much dead. Even if you detonate them back here, that basically just creates a big wave of Crimson Creeper, which washes up into what should be your base, and this kills you. So you've got eggs flying at your base, and if you shoot them down, you die anyway. And now we get to the Creeper, which gets Crimson, and like there, this is not a trivial amount of Creeper, this is 130 per, uh, 130 per second on such a small map, and it just gets Crimsoned. Except it gets even worse, for two reasons. First of all, the flow rate of Creeper has been, has been amplified by a factor of 8. The Creeper flow is 8 times higher than normal. And just as the cherry on top, if this flip breeder gets activated with creeper because it is so much stronger, I'm not sure if you can tell this in the bottom in the uh, bottom left, but it is six times stronger if it's activated by creeper. Yeah, if if creeper activates this flip breeder, you're pretty much dead. So this map is brutal in all aspects. It has obscure tech that you basically need to know to beat the map. The actual strategy that you need to figure out once you understand all of the necessary mechanics is very difficult to figure out. And so once you actually so once you actually have the strategy, this is where the map gets even more ridiculous. Because once you have a strategy, you need to figure out all of the minor optimizations, like you know, the precise build order, all the details, how many of each unit are you building, like where are you gonna build them, what are you doing, in you know, where does every single packet go? 
And then once you figure out all that, then you need to execute it. Let me be clear. The execution for this map assumes you are doing frame level stuff. You are doing frame advance. What do I need to do? Exactly. This, like, you know, this can, like, you know, you need, uh, you know, knowing things like cannon has a fire, has a fire delay of, I always get it backwards, eight frames. So basically, if the cannon just fired, now it's a good time to take it off. It hasn't fired in six frames, not a good time to take it off. You can just wait two frames and then pick it up and get an extra shot. Things like that. This map assumes you play flawlessly, and even then, it is absurdly difficult to take down. And that is why this map tops this list. Like, even like even though there is cheese, the cheese is insane to figure out and still has a huge number of complications. It still assumes frame-level perfect, like, frame-level flawless play. So, with that, that is a list of pretty much the hardest maps of Creep World 4. Now, and obviously, obviously this wasn't exactly the 10 hardest maps, and... But people will say, obviously, I missed this map. This map should have been on the list. And, you know, even with... And also just several things that I put in the description. I, like, there, there are some 3,600 maps on colonies. There's no way I can check all of them and accurately rank them on difficulty. So if I missed any, feel or you have any other feedback, feel free to put it in the comments below. And have a great day. Goodbye.